Hello everyone, it's time again we talk about the Quran. Last year we examined the book's, let's say, unique perspective on topics like marriage, women's rights, slavery, etc. And the verses we found were quite concerning. However, while that video focused more on the morality of the Quran, this time we'll look at its scientific accuracy, or lack thereof. These are the top 10 unscientific Quran verses. Number 10, where milk comes from. While the part of the body where a cow produces milk may seem like common sense, the Quran somehow got the location wrong. It claims that milk comes from their belly, between excretions and blood. It also describes the milk as pure and palatable to the drinkers. Yes, never mind the fact that raw milk can have bacteria, parasites, and viruses in them, and never mind the people who are lactose intolerant, or the fact that it's very common in people of Arab descent. How ironic. Basically, never go to this book for any info on nutrition. Number 9. How Birds Fly. Aerodynamics? Air pressure? Pfft, that's stupid. The Quran says birds fly because of Allah. Well, I'm sorry Allah, but for an all-powerful being, I think you could do a bit better. <laughs> Couldn't God have just made the birds self-sufficient? Why would an all-powerful creator make animals that can't function on their own? It seems like a very unintelligent design. Number 8. How Ships Float Since the writers of the Quran couldn't wrap their heads around how birds can fly, it shouldn't be a shock they didn't know how ships float either. In the book, ships float not due to buoyancy, but because of, you guessed it, Allah. Remember everyone, if you don't know how shit works, just say God did it. DNA? God. The Earth? God. Cancer? God. Oh, yeah, I forgot. Nobody likes that one. Number 7. Bring Back the Dead Before the invention of things like the defib, it seems they had a very different method for reviving people. One part of the Quran tells a story of slaughtering a cow, and then using part of that cow's body to bring a man back to life. I don't know, something tells me this doesn't work, but to be sure, let's do an experiment. Allahu Akbar! Oh, what the fuck? <laughs> Number 6. Dead birds can fly. As if the Quran couldn't get any more bizarre, this book has zombie birds in it too. Allah tells Abraham to take four birds and cut their bodies into pieces, scatter their body parts over mountaintops, and then call the birds back. They will swiftly come to him. This is some fucked up torture porn. I mean, this scenario is disturbing enough on its own, but can you imagine being the bird in this situation? <laughs> Maybe Allah just really hates birds. Either way, this is some next level animal cruelty. Vegans get on this shit. Number 5. The Moon Emits Light A word of advice to any science majors out there. If you're studying for an exam, this is the last book you want to use. In the Quran, the moon is described as being a light. Not reflected light, but literally a light itself. That just makes no fucking sense. I mean, it's just bullshit. However, this isn't the only thing they say about the moon. Number 4. The moon was split in two. At the very beginning of chapter 54 in the Quran, it says the moon was, amazingly, split in two. Why did this happen? Well, according to the Hadith, the people of Mecca requested that Muhammad show them a miracle. So Muhammad was like, okay, there's the moon split in half. Now, if this event actually occurred, you would think there'd be some scientific evidence supporting it, and you would think there'd be tons of documentation from other cultures recounting this event. But there isn't. Now, some Muslims have tried using this picture of a depression on the moon as evidence the moon was split. However, this is actually one of many grooves found on the moon called a rill. This particular rill is called Rima Ariadeus, and while the moon has a circumference of over 10,000 kilometers, this rill only has a length of about 300, which makes it less than 3% the circumference of the moon. Yeah, not very strong evidence of a split. Not to mention the fact that planets like Mars and Venus also have rills, so did Allah split them in half too? Even a scientist from NASA has said this is bullshit. Number 3. The Sun Sets on Earth Yes, people, despite being roughly 109 times the diameter of Earth, and despite the Sun's surface being about 10,000 degrees Fahrenheit, the Sun is not only able to land on Earth, but can do so without burning us all alive. To be specific, the Quran says the Sun sets in a muddy spring, effectively boiling any life in there. Number 2. The Shape of the Earth Okay, I want you to guess how the Quran describes the Earth. I'll give you a hint. It's not a sphere or a ball. Give up? Alright, 
It's actually described as being like a carpet, spread out. I guess kind of like one of those city play carpets for children. Come to think of it, a lot of things in the Quran sound like the ignorant but vivid ideas of a child. It's almost like the Quran was written a long time ago by people with little comprehension of how the world works. Huh. Number one, where semen comes from. And now, ladies and infidels, according to the Quran, semen comes from between backbone and ribs. Wow, that is impressively wrong. You need to move a little lower. Whether it be cows or human beings, anatomy is clearly not the Quran's strong suit. So hopefully with this video, you've learned some new things about the Quran. And hey, even if you're a Muslim, maybe you weren't familiar with a few of these verses. The Quran is said to be the word of Allah. And because Allah is apparently perfect in every way, the Quran is therefore perfect as well. But if that were the case, then there should not be verses in this book which we know are empirically wrong. Seeing how the Quran is so blatantly detached from reality, maybe it's not the word of a god. Maybe it's not really perfect. Maybe, just maybe, it's nothing more than a primitive book from a primitive time.